Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you should configure the NTLM and advanced audit settings for Microsoft Defender for Identity. Now, since we know what is MDI and in the last video, we have seen how to configure the classic sensor. The next step is to understand what is the purpose of NTLM auditing or advanced auditing fundamentally. Now, before I go ahead and show you the exact configuration and the commands with which all these things are enabled, there is one very simple question that we should understand first that why do we even need advanced audit policies? Okay. So if you guys remember, this was the deck that I have used in the video where I was explaining about the components of MDI, right? And as we know, the fundamental idea behind Microsoft Defender for Identity is to go ahead and monitor Windows events from all these different kinds of servers, right? Now, there is something uh, which is related to how these servers work or how any default configuration works, okay? So assume that I have a couple of DCs and I also have ADFS servers, ADCS servers and IntraConnect servers. These are all different servers which I want to monitor. Now, when it comes to default configuration, there are some events which are generated fundamentally. Okay. So let's say if I go to my server and if I open event viewer, I can see multiple categories over here. But then when it comes to audit, okay, there are certain policies that you can enable. And because of those policies or let's say group policy objects fundamentally, the service specific audit action is also tracked, which means what you will have additional set of events coming here per service. I will explain this in a lot more detail, but as of now, just assume that let's say these are five different categories which are creating events, but then I want to make sure that for a specific category of service that exists in my domain controller, every possible log type is created or every possible event type is created. Now, what do I fundamentally mean by this that in Windows events section, there are service specific logs. And then there are type of events, for example, informational error, warning, and verbose, just an example, or let's say even critical, right? Now, let's say domain controller has 10 different services, which are up and running. And this is the default configuration. This is just a hypothetical scenario to make you understand what exactly we are doing, right? So Assume that there are 10 different services and for each service type, these are categories of events, which domain controller is creating by default. Now assume service number three and service number four, these services, they create identity specific data. And I just want everything to be available to me. For example, I want informational logs as well. I may be doing some analysis. Okay. Or I want verbose level uh, logging for these two services. So with the help of policy, or let's say with the help of GPO, I will create settings that will push domain controller to create events for these particular categories as well, which was not the scenario previously. Okay, so fundamentally, when it comes to advanced configuration, it simply means that you have to create a group policy object that initiates the creation of certain events on domain controllers. Okay. So this was the machine that we have onboarded in our last video, which is PDC, which I was also showing you on the console. And if you go ahead and read this particular article, which is for enabling audit policies for windows event logs, fundamentally speaking, and if I'll scroll down and show you this particular section, you can see it is guiding me how to create or how to enable a specific set of advanced audit configuration that will go ahead and create the logs of these particular categories. So in account logon section, I need audit credential validation. Similarly, in account management, I need audit distribution group management. And this list just goes on. But again, the fundamental idea is why exactly you even need this. Okay. So these two lines will make you understand why exactly you need this kind of policy to be present on your domain controller to enhance detection and gather more information on users actions like NTLM logon 
and security group changes. Microsoft Defender for Identity relies on specific entries in Windows event log. Okay, so this GPO that we create, it fundamentally results in more events getting created here. And then this data is shared with the cloud service and the same concept goes on. Okay. Now, to begin with, fundamentally, what you need is the PowerShell module. Okay. So this same article, which lays down uh, the methods that should be followed, or let's say the configuration that should be there, you can see, tells you that what all you should change to have a specific setting enabled. However, all this can be something which is configured through PowerShell as well with the PowerShell module, right? Now, if at all you don't have Defender for Identity PowerShell module in your environment, then you can just go ahead and run this command and it will install the PowerShell module for Microsoft Defender for Identity. And here I'm going to say name and here I'm just going to type Defender for Identity hyphen verbose. Okay. Now you can see that since in my environment it is already installed, so it is skipping the installation. And to verify the same, what I can do is I can type get hyphen module hyphen name, and then again I can type defender for identity. Okay. Now to get the list of uh, let's say all the commands associated with this module, I can just go ahead and get this output into a variable and then I can say exported commands, right? So you can see I'm getting a list of all the different commands that are associated with this particular module. Now, fundamentally speaking, with this module itself, you can create all the configuration that you need, okay? Now, before I go ahead and create any configuration, let me come back to my browser once and show you that for this particular domain controller that we have onboarded, I'm getting NTLM auditing is not enabled. Okay. And there are a couple of others recommendation as well, right? So we'll try to fix all of them. And this is the reason why I'm showing you the step-by-step -step process in terms of making sure you don't even miss even one single aspect related to MDI. Okay, so once you're sorted with this particular section of making sure that you have the PowerShell module, then you can run this particular command, which is new hyphen MDI configuration report. Okay, so I can say new hyphen MDI configuration report, which is this particular command. Okay, now it will ask me for the path. And here I'm going to give an account with which I'm signed in. So the account with which I'm signed in right now is enterprise admin. And uh, that's it. I can now go to this particular location, which is C user admin. And I have two reports here. Okay. Now what I have to do is I will open one of these report. Okay. Just to make sure that we get all the insights. Okay. So this is my report which has been created once I initiated the command and you can see it is only showing me one single thing which is configuration related to container auditing. Okay. Now if you take a close look in this report itself, there are certain aspects where it is showing me this, these settings are not applicable because this server is not an ADFS server. So you can see it is showing me as not applicable. Okay. However, this machine is also the certificate authority. I mean, I have also installed ADCS here. So that's the reason why it is showing me failure for these two, uh, sorry, for this one, which is specifically related to certificate authority. And then you have this failure for domain controllers. And if I'll just zoom out, then you have these three failures as well. Okay. This is not applicable fundamentally to us because, uh, in most of the scenarios, Entra Connect server will be a different server altogether. In my environment, this particular machine is Entra Connect as well. So everything is on the same machine because it's a lab. However, you will get not applicable for this as well, provided your AD and Entra Connect is not the same server. Okay. So now the question is how exactly I should go ahead and enable all these settings. So fundamentally, whenever you create any 
report like this it is something which is giving you a detailed list of commands as well to fix okay so if there is any policy that should exist in your dc you can run this particular command and it will create the policy okay so fundamentally what is happening as of now that whenever you initiate a specific command so let's say i run this particular command which is set hyphen mdi configuration mode domain and configuration as ntlm auditing this is the situation before when it comes to group policy objects and once this particular command is completed i will see a new policy getting associated here or getting created here in the group policy object container okay so let me go to my server and show you all this in action so i'm going to say gbmc.msc and here you can see i'm only getting two different policies now the fundamental idea is that you can go ahead and customize these policies as well okay this is just for your clarity because if you go ahead and see the article okay it shows you the step by step process which fundamentally means that i can go ahead and customize my default domain controller policy let's say if i click on edit i can go to policy section and then i can go to uh, this particular section of uh, windows security which is this one fundamentally windows settings and then i can say security settings and then i can say advanced audit policy configuration and i can expand this and i'm getting a list of all the different settings that can be customized now this is the same information fundamentally which is available on the article as well so let's say if i come back to my article you can see account logon account management okay so let's say if i come back here to my server again i can double click on this one and you can see it is giving me these four options which are here in the article as well you can see this one right however i mean fundamentally microsoft has made this very kind of convenient with the help of powershell module itself so instead of customizing all this manually what we can do is we can run one specific command and the configuration will be in place okay so i will kind of clear the screen now i'll open my report and let's say i want to enable ntlm auditing now what do you see over here is the gpo name which means what once i'll initiate this particular command there will be a new gpo which will be created okay and it will be automatically linked to my domain controller or you as well okay so let's say if i run this command now let's just give it a couple of minutes it should yeah it's done now so let's go to gpmc and let's just refresh it okay let me just close it and start it again and you can see it's now showing me the policy okay now if i go to my domain controller ou you can see it is also linked as well okay however this scenario will not be same for all the commands okay so let's say you try a different configuration let's say i'm going to enable a remote sam for an example okay in this case even though the policy will get created the gpo will get created however this gpo will not be linked automatically now there are obvious reasons behind it because everything cannot be directly linked uh, to your specific set of servers but since these are two different behavior i thought of showing you this as well so let's say if i copy this particular command now and come back to my powershell and run this command you can see it is prompting me to give my account and i will do that and again it takes couple of minutes however you can see there is a warning coming which says microsoft defender for identity remote some access requires manual linking okay so fundamentally you can run this particular command which is new hyphen mdi configuration report it will create this report for you and then from this particular section itself depending upon the server on which you are running this command you can choose the applicable settings and get those policies applied so let's say if i go ahead and copy and run these two commands as well which is one for advanced audit policies 
and let's say I run the one for CA as well. Okay, I copy this command and I come back here and I run this. Okay, so fundamentally as of now we have fixed four different settings. Okay, so now let's just go ahead and run this command which is new hyphen MDI configuration report. Again, the same default location and this is my account. Now let's just wait again for a couple of minutes and this report will be ready now and it will show us the updated result. Now, one more thing that you should observe that even though the GPU is created, since it is not linked, this command is asking us to go ahead and link it, which is fine, okay? So now let's open the updated one, it's 635. Let's open the latest report and you can see everything is now showing as passed. In fact, those four different settings that we have just configured. Now, once you have enabled all these settings, let's say different policies, then you should come to your portal as well and check for these alerts or these health issues if they are resolved or not. Okay. So as of now, what I can do is let's just quickly restart my machine and see if anything is getting changed or not. At times, it may take up to 20 minutes. Okay. But let's just see how how long it takes to show the updated information okay so as of now it's 637 i'm going to restart this machine and will resume the moment these health issues fundamentally speaking are resolved okay so let me just show you that section again on the browser this one okay Perfect. So it took around five minutes, I can say, or let's say six minutes. 6.37 is when I rebooted the machine. And now my machine is up and running again. And if I come back to my server on security.microsoft.com, you can see it will show me the NTLM auditing part is now closed. There's, it's no longer a health issue. Okay. So this is how you go ahead and enable fundamentally the advanced audit settings for your MDI sensor specifically for DC okay in the next video I am going to showcase how to set up ADFS servers and in the same video I will con configure the advanced settings for ADFS as well so if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time